Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. If you haven't already, you can follow me on Twitter in the link below as well as subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. We're going to pick up where we left off where I cut that video. It's going to be much, much more comprehensive than what we've done already. We're going to take what we did in the last video, but do it from scratch where we are looking for some vulnerable functions, but then we're going to tie in everything we learned today about caller references and about highlighting, and then we're going to add in some new stuff so that we can scroll through the UI with adding tags to our vulnerable functions so we can use hotkeys in the UI to kind of like run through and find everything really quickly, as well as let's do um, some imported function symbol stuff. So there's going to be a lot of new stuff. So we're going to want to open up our Visual Studio Code again because this will be more comprehensive. And since we're looking for vulnerable functions, we need a list of vulnerable functions. So what I did was I just searched Google and I said, hey, Google, find me some vulnerable functions. And it gave me this blog and it had a list of these functions as, hey, these could create buffer overflows. So I put them in a Python list and we're going to use that as our proof of concept. But we need a target that has one of these vulnerable functions, obviously. So what I did for that was... I went online to something called Nightmare. If you haven't seen this before, you're learning reverse engineering, et cetera. It's a fun little thing where you can go through and you learn RE and buffer overflows and heap overflows via CTF targets and it walks you through that stuff. So it's a good place to get stuff like binaries. So I went to stack, stack buffer overflows and I just went to the first one. And if you roll through there, it talks about a gets vulnerability and this call to gets, there's an overflow that allows you to do something with it. We're not going to exploit it because that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is scripting with binary ninja. So we're going to try to find this vulnerability and then tag it and highlight it. So all I did was search for this on Google. And I think I found it in a GitHub for like CTF time or something of that nature. So just find the binary. It's from a CTF. Or you can just find anything with a buffer overflow with a vulnerable function in our list. And that'll work perfectly fine. Now... Let's get in and start coding and think about what we need to do. So we have our list of forbidden functions. Um, so we need a list of those functions and we're going to use our imported function symbols to do that. So we're going to say symbols equals. And what we need to do is we'll open up binary ninja here and we'll say, okay, bv dot get underscore symbols. And we'll see what pops up there. Okay, symbols of type. Okay, perfect. So we'll do that. And one thing I didn't show you yet, we could put a question mark here and hit enter. And sometimes on these, it'll have some documentation. So we have get symbols of type, retrieves a list of objects of provided symbol type in the optionality. Okay, well, we need some imported functions. Uh, let's see what else we got here. So we got an uh, example. We have bv.getSymbolsOfType, symbol type, import address symbol. Okay, interesting. So let's copy the symbol type and see what we can find for that. So if we open up the API again and we do a search for that symbol type, it'll bring up this one right here. And here's the list of the different types. We need an imported function symbol type. So this is how to combine what we're doing on the command line with the APIs and kind of piece together what we need to do. So back in Visual Studio Code, I'm going to paste in this line here. So it's just our symbols variable and we're gonna say BV get symbols of type. Our symbol type is gonna be imported function symbols. And that should bring us back a list of the imported symbols. I'm showing you just different ways to do stuff. Earlier we did uh, via bv.functions. Now we're going to use something else. And we'll say for symbol in symbols. So that's going to list through all the symbols. And what do we need to do? Well, we say need to say if our symbol.name is in our forbidden functions. So that'll look through the whole list there then we need to do something. And what do we want to do? Well, let's print out what we found. So I'm going to paste something in here, just a simple print statement. So you don't have to watch me type. And all we're going to say is an F string, which allows you to combine 
you know, words with variables and we'll say found a vulnerable function. We're going to print out what that vulnerable function is from this list if it was found, as well as the address where that symbol is located. So that should work, but this will likely break something because we have spaces and probably tabs and all kinds of stupid stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit Control Shift P. I'm gonna do that convert indentation to spaces. If you don't see that there, just start typing and you'll find it. And that way, all of this is like that now, but this is a good time to think about, okay, this is getting kind of large. Maybe we don't wanna paste this into the terminal. Maybe there's a better way to do things, and there is. So if you go to plugins and you go to manage plugins and you type in, I believe it is snippet, UI plugin, and you do an install over here of that, and then you go into your plugins up top, and you go to snippets, and under snippets, you go to snippet editor, what will happen is you will get something like this. And this allows you to work with a little bit more code. Again, it's really finicky with the spaces and issues, and sometimes you gotta fight it. But when it starts getting larger, it's a little bit easier to deal with. Now, if I hit save, because I just hit new snippet, I pasted it in there. Now when I hit run, it's gonna run, but it's not gonna show up here, it's gonna show up under log. So let me do that, I'm gonna hit run. And it says found vuln function, imported function symbol gets at this address. And if I hit that, it's at the gets, so that's where we're at. Now what we wanna do is we want to find the calls to this gets, like who calls it, you know, these cross references. And then we wanna highlight those lines where it's being used in the code because that would be likely where the vulnerability is. And then we want to do things to that, like highlight it and tag it, etc. So how do we do that? Well, we know how to use references to things to grab the functions that it calls. We did that earlier. So let's do that. We'll open up our Visual Studio code again and we'll continue on there. So how do we do that? Well, we need our function. So we'll say function equals, and we can set it to our symbol address like this, bv.get underscore function at. And again, if you went to the command line and typed in bv.get and start looking for something, you're gonna find this function at. And what we're gonna say is at the symbol dot address. So now what should happen is we should set the current function within this loop as we're going to the symbol address that was found with this vulnerable functions. With that function, we can now look at all the places that called that function using the caller sites that we used earlier. So let's do that. The first thing I'm going to do though is I did notice while I was doing this that there was some values of functions that came back none when it was looping. So we're gonna say if function is not none. And you'll know this if that comes in your terminal, something like, you know, can't process this because of none type, then just do something like this to prevent it. And then if it's not none, it's gonna hop back through and say for site in function dot caller sites, which we've done before, we want to create our target and create our function, and then we're gonna highlight that first because we already know how to do that. So we'll say target equals site.address. And we've done this before, and then we got function equals site.function. So the function that called that particular vulnerable function and the address of it. And then we want to paste in something to highlight that. So we're gonna say function set user instruction highlight. We've already done this before and we're gonna use the function and the target and we're gonna highlight it blue. We've already done this before in the previous scripts. What's gonna happen now, I'm gonna copy this all, but first I'm going to hit Control Shift P and convert to spaces, copy that, and then we're gonna paste it back into our scripts editor. So I'm gonna bring this up, I'm gonna paste this in here. Now what should happen is this. When we run this, I'm gonna hit save, 
and we run this, it's going to go and it's going to find this gets function. It's going to call the reference of whatever called it. So that would be a main, I believe, calls this. So we're going to go back to main and it's going to say, hey, there's a vulnerable function being called in main. Let's highlight this. So if we were searching through main, oh crap, there's a vulnerable function highlighted. So let's take a look and see if that actually happens. I'll leave this open here while we run it. So I'm going to hit run right here. And you'll see we got a gets got highlighted. Perfect. And if we look at the output in the terminal here for the log, we'll see found vulnerable function at here, which was this gets, but then it traversed backwards to who called it at main. And it highlighted it for us as we're going through, but we can also do some more stuff. So there's also things like tags and tags are interesting because they allow us to tag various things and it'll put like a little icon next to here and we can like scroll through those with hotkeys. So if I look at tags right now, we have some random tags that don't have anything to do with what we're doing. And here are our tag types. So let's create our own vulnerable tag type and then let's assign it whatever we find. In this case, it would be the gets. That way it's just one more thing we're learning how to do. And we can tag things throughout the binary we're looking for. That way we can go back and maybe add them to needs analysis or whatever you wanna add in here as you go. So let's figure out how to do that. So let's create a custom tag and then let's add to those tags. Now we could type in BV dot create take a look through there and we'll see uh, create tag. We also could go into here and say, okay, create tag and look, and we're going to grab, okay, here's how to create a tag. So we can check that out. And okay, bv.create cab crabby functions. We could just grab this and that's just an emoji. We can actually paste whatever emoji we want in there, but let's do this and let's put this into our code. So open this up. And right at the beginning, we don't need to put this within our loop, otherwise it's gonna do too many. We just wanna do this once. We're gonna create this and we're gonna name it something. So let's name it bone function. This is gonna tag all of our vulnerable functions and put a little crab next to it. So we'll create that like that. And then what we need to do is we need to add a tag to this vulnerable functions that we created. So how do we do that? Um, it's probably going to be an add tag. We could probably check that out right in the API as well. So we can go add tag. And let's see, binary view dot add tag. Yep. And it's bv dot add. And then here crashes, no pointer dereference. So you can put whatever you want into there. Let's just copy paste this. I'm showing you a bunch of different ways to do stuff. So we're not just in the Python terminal or just in the documentation. We're kind of just uh, using what fits. So we have our thing here. We'll probably just put this right before the highlight. So we'll go bv.add tag. And what we'll say is we want this to go to our target, right? Our site.address, which is our target. We want it to go into our vulnerable functions. So we'll say vuln functions. That way it goes into this tag type that we create. And then we wanna put just a little note here. We'll just say, I don't know, possible vulnerable function. Take a look at the API again. Uh, yeah, no pointer dereference. I think that's just a note there. So that should be good. Um, again, we don't want things to break. So we're gonna hit a control shift P and we're gonna say convert indentation to spaces. And then I'm gonna highlight this whole thing. And we're gonna copy and we're gonna paste it right back into our editor again. So I'm gonna grab this. And let me explain what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna save this and then hit run when we're ready. And what should happen is in our tag types, we should get a vulnerable functions tag type. And then that should show up with 
a tag that it tags here, adding to our vulnerable types. And then under where we highlighted here, we should get a little crab symbol. So that's how that should work. There'll be a lot of stuff going on. So because we are creating a tag type, we are setting a tag, and then we are highlighting. But we already highlighted, so we're not going to see that happen again. But we're going to hit run. And we see that popped up. Look, there's a little crab guy right here next to gets. There's a little crab right here, and it says possibly vulnerable. If we click it, we'll end up there. So if I'm somewhere else in this binary, let me go somewhere. And we are in the tag, um, and I go, oh, how do we get there? Oh, there it is, perfect. It's highlighted for us. If we were scrolling through, we'd be like, oh, there's a tag, and there's a, a highlight, so we know what's going on. If we look at the log, again, we see what we printed out into the log. Now, I also believe if we were somewhere else in the binary and we had a bunch of these tags, so let's just go, I don't know, right here, and we hit, I believe it's control page up and page down, so it would be here. It will take us to the various tags within here. So that just brought me to one of those random ones that were here that we could delete that were auto uh, from the auto analysis, but then we keep hitting page up. And we're just scrolling through our, our tags and it gets us here. So if we were kind of analyzing this binary and there was a multi-step process we were following through, we wanna analyze different pieces of code, you can manually go through and add all these tags, delete the ones that don't matter, and then page up and down to drop to different parts in the code. Or you can auto-analyze these um, like we just did and add them all in and then scroll through and look at each vulnerable function. And then you could also do some additional analysis to look before and after that to see what's being put in that function or do some source to sync to try to figure out, okay, what's going in here? Is it user input? Is it a buffer overflow? Is there not enough you know, uh, memory or something like that? Whatever, whatever it is to overflow that buffer or to exploit it in some way. So that is the whole of the video on this one. I think we're probably near an hour or something. So if you made it this far, definitely uh, subscribe and uh, hit me up on Twitter. I hope you learned something because this was just a whole bunch of information. If you want me to do more of these, just let me know. I'm kind of learning a bunch about Binary Ninja and how to do useful things with it. And it's fun for me.